Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We bless you. Hallelujah. We love you. Yes. Hallelujah. With all that is within us, Father. Hallelujah. We love us because that's how you loved us first. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We pray, Father God, that tonight we can have an encounter, an experience. Hallelujah. A meeting time. Hallelujah. A rendezvous point. Hallelujah. Right here tonight. Hallelujah. We want to meet with you. Hallelujah. We pray that tonight, hallelujah, you will be pleased to dwell in the presence of our praises. Hallelujah. As we lift up a shout and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. As we would be pleased to dwell in your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to touch. Yes. We want a word from you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We want to leave here filled. Hallelujah. Yes. Because we've been filled up with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That you see our everyday, day to day going ins, comings outs. Hallelujah. You see what we have to encounter just to get here. Hallelujah. And you, hallelujah, are the only one that can minister. You are the only one that can heal. You are the only one, hallelujah, that can refill us after we pour it out day after day. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, hallelujah, that we will leave here with our cup overflowing. Yeah, yeah, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Father God, hallelujah. We desire to have an encounter with you. Yes. Hallelujah. We pray, Father God, that you would speak through my mind as the pastor. Hallelujah. Think through my mind. Speak yes, through my lips. Yes, yes. Use me as a vessel of clay that is meet and fit for your use and prepared to minister to your people tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Even though I'm just a humble vessel of dirt and clay. Hallelujah. You've placed treasure within earthen vessels. Yes. Hallelujah. So that the words that come from me, hallelujah, will be words that come straight from you. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask you tonight to open up your Bibles too. Amen. Hallelujah. Open up your Bibles to the book of John. The book of John, chapter 15. And throughout the entire year, amen, for anybody who may be joining us for the first time, hallelujah, we determined, we decided, hallelujah, that God can do it through me in 2023 because I'm willing to stretch. stretch, amen, hallelujah. Coming from Isaiah chapter 54 where it says this, enlarge the place of thy tent. Amen. Hallelujah. What we discovered is a tent is a temporary dwelling place. Amen. Hallelujah. So before you get to where God is leading you to, right where you are right now, enlarge. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Enlarge the space of your imagination. Hallelujah. To see yourself doing better. Amen. Hallelujah. If you can't see it, you can't be it. Amen. Hallelujah. And see yourself. Hallelujah. In the position that you were prayed for. Hallelujah. See yourself. Enlarge your vision. Enlarge your hallelujah hopes. And believe God for more. Hallelujah. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Then it says this. Stretch forth the curtains. Stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. And we discovered, amen, that curtains, when they're hung, are usually hung where their pleats and folds. It says stretch them. Look and see what's in the fold. Hallelujah. What we have to do is look and see what has God placed within you and me. Hallelujah. He's placed potential. He's placed power. We learned on Sunday morning, hallelujah, that we're already blessed because he blessed us with the blessed life when he created us. He said, be blessed fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. Hallelujah. And he said, you got Jesus Christ living in you. Hallelujah. Giving you access to a new covenant. Hallelujah. Established on better promises. Hallelujah. All that is in you. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Look and see what has God put in you. Hallelujah. And don't limit yourself based on what somebody else said about you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Stretch forth the curtains. Hallelujah. Lengthen the cords. When you're pitching a tent, the cords go even further than the curtains. The cords stretch beyond even what you can do. Through prayer and confession, you can stretch beyond even what you can do. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray. Hallelujah. Bold prayers. Hallelujah. Boldly coming before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Knowing that you have access by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And confession. Saying about you what God has said about you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just in the introduction and just telling you what we've been learning. Amen. But we, there's something about saying about you what God has said about you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. My Bible says that when Peter said to Jesus, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus said, Well, guess what? I'm changing your name. Stop calling yourself Simon, wishy-washy, in, out, ebb, flow, back, forth. Call yourself Peter. A rock, stable, established, firm, fixed, rooted, and grounded. Start talking about you like I talk about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He told Jacob, your name shall be called Israel. Amen. You're no longer a con man, gamester, trickster, supplanter. Hallelujah. You're a prince with God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Start talking to yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a prince with God. Hallelujah. I'm a princess with God. Hallelujah. You need to start talking about you the way God talks about you. Hallelujah. So you can start living up to all he's called you to. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Then he said this, strengthen the stakes. Reinforce the foundation of your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. See, if there are cracks in the foundation, you can't build. Amen. Amen. Reinforce the foundations of your faith. Hallelujah. And what we're doing, we're rewinding and going back on some messages here to reinforce the foundation of our faith. Hallelujah. Because in order for you to stretch, you have to continue. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. John chapter 15 verses 8 and 9 says this. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Verse 9 says this, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. Amen. In order to stretch, you got to continue. Amen? Hallelujah. You've got to learn how to continue. you got to have a Caleb mentality where there's no quit in your game. Hallelujah. And you say, hallelujah, as my strength was then, so is my strength now. Give me my mountain. Hallelujah. I won't give in. I won't give up. I won't let go until God blesses me. I'm going to learn how to continue. Amen. Hallelujah. And then see, the first thing you got to learn how to do is continue in his love. Amen. Continue in my love, he said. But preaching, Royal just talked about love not too long ago. Like I said, if there's a crack in the foundation, you can't build. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue to reinforce the foundation of God's love. Hallelujah. Even like the world said, hallelujah, the height of his love, hallelujah, is that he made heaven available to you. The depth of his love, hallelujah, is that he came down to earth, hallelujah, to a place called Nazareth where people say nothing good can come out of it. Hallelujah. And even descended into the lower parts of hell just for you. That's what his love would do for you. Hallelujah. The width of his love or the breadth of his love, hallelujah, is from as far as the east is to the west. Hallelujah. There's no limit to his 
love. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you're going to be somebody that continue through the difficulties that you have to go through, you've got to be established in his love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I like to call it first love. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. He first loved us in chronologically. In other words, he loved us you before you loved him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me make it personal. He loved me, amen, yes, yes. before I loved him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. That blesses me to know that. That means I didn't do anything to earn his love, and therefore I can't do nothing to lose his love. Yeah. Hallelujah. That helps me to continue through, hallelujah, whatever I got to go through, knowing that his love for me is Unconditional. Amen. Hallelujah. We talked about looking in the rear of you mirror to see where did God bring you from. Hallelujah. I remember what God brought me from. And he loved me before I loved him. Amen. Hallelujah. When I was smoking and drinking on the church steps. What? Mm -hmm. When Lord have mercy. When I was that dude that yeah. Your parents probably warned you about. Mm -hmm. God, God loved me. But God. But God. But God. Yes. He loved me unconditionally. Oh yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. And that helps me to know that, I, hallelujah, I can continue to do what it is God has called me to because I can't disqualify myself based on my performance. Hallelujah. I'll continue. Amen. 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 I was telling my wife I wanted this to be up temple, but I said I feel like I'm getting stuck in the love. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of when Abram went to the promised land and he went to the promised land. It didn't look like a promised land. So what did he do? He probably did what you would do. Amen. He went back to Egypt. Amen. And when he went to Egypt, the king of Egypt took his wife. And the Bible says this. Abraham lied. Oh, yes. But told a half truth. <laughs> and said, tell them you're my sister. Yeah. Abraham, the great man of faith, lied to cover his own behind. And the Bible says this. That when Abraham left Egypt, he left Egypt rich. Not because of what he did, but because of the love of a God, hallelujah, that loves me unconditionally, hallelujah, who first loves me chronologically before I do anything to prove my love to him. He loves me, amen? Hallelujah. And he loves me in priority. Let me back it up a little bit because I need to, I think I need to explain and define something. That's what's called mercy. Amen? Yeah. Mercy. Amen? There's a difference between grace and mercy. Amen? Hallelujah. We'll get to talking about grace, but I want you to understand when you're talking about how hallelujah he first loved me chronologically, it's called mercy. Amen? It comes from the Greek word Elion, amen, which means a compassion and kindness for the miserable <laughs> and the afflicted. Yeah. That means before, before I was lovable, God loved me. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank yes. you, Lord. Before I was likable, God loved me. Hallelujah. And since there's nothing I can do to disqualify my love, his love for me, I'll continue. I'll continue to do what he's told me to. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He loved me in priority. In other words, he loves me more than he loves anything else. Mm -hmm. He loves you more than he loved anything else. The reason he made everything before he made man is because he made everything for man. Mm -hmm. 
He asked Job the question, where were you? Where? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Mm. Where were you when I hung the stars and they sang? Where were you when I set the earth on its axis, set it on its orbit? Where were you when I hung the clouds like a garment? Where were you when I did all this stuff for you? Hallelujah. He loves me in priority. He loved me so much that he made everything for me. Hallelujah. So I need to know this so that I don't give in and give up when I go through difficulty. I need to know God's love for me so I can continue. He loved me, amen, hallelujah, with a passion. He loved me with a passion. When Jesus Christ was headed to the cross, the Bible says that he took the scourging and the beating and the crucifixion just for me. He endured the contradiction of sinners and everything they did against him. Why? For the joy that was set before him because he looked down the annuals of time and he saw me. Yeah. He loved me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He loved me so much. Hallelujah. And he loved the disciples so much that after he would, rose from the dead, he could have went straight to heaven. Amen. But guess what? Before he rose to heaven, hallelujah, to receive a glorified body, he said, I got to stop by and see my disciples. He stopped in and saw him, amen, hallelujah. And he showed him the holes in his hand. He showed him the hole in his side, hallelujah. He told Mary, don't come up and hug me. I haven't descended to the Father yet. I still hurt from the crucifixion, but I couldn't go, hallelujah, where I'm destined to go until I stop by to see you. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. He loved me that much. Mm -hmm. He loves you that much. Never doubt God's love, hallelujah, but use it as fuel to cause you to continue. Because you can't stretch if you can't continue. Amen? Hallelujah. Continue in his love. And continuing in his love should cause you to continue in his grace. What do you mean, preacher? God's grace is his unmerited favor. God's grace, hallelujah, is God's riches at Christ's expense. God's grace, hallelujah, is the power and equipment that he gives you for ministry, giving you the ability to do, hallelujah, what he's called you to, hallelujah, continue in his grace. In other words, hallelujah, you ought to have a faith that stretches the grace of God, hallelujah, so that you can continue to do what he's called you to. Amen? If you pray in little prayers, if your goals are just to get your needs met, and your desire is just to have enough for you, your wife, your kids, you four, no more. If you aren't letting, hallelujah, God's promises cause you to stay, hallelujah, reminded, hallelujah, of his grace. You are letting, hallelujah, the love of God help you to continue. The world told us last week, every prayer problem is a love problem. You don't know how much God loves you. Hallelujah. Because if you do, you'll stretch the grace. Hallelujah. The Bible says we can frustrate the grace of God. Mm. Where, hallelujah, God says, I've offered you this much. And you're only living in this much. I need you to stretch. Hallelujah. Continue in his grace. Amen. Hallelujah. In order to continue in his grace, you got to continue in his word. Continue in his word. Hallelujah. In other words, hallelujah, continue in the faith of God. The Bible is called the faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Not a way, 
not a truth. Hallelujah. This is the way. This is the truth. Hallelujah. It's called the. The. There are no other doctrines, hallelujah, that lead to Jesus. There's no other way to access the grace of God. It's called the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Not the Book of Mormon, not the Pearl of Great Price, not the Quran, hallelujah, not Islam, not Buddha, not Vishnu, none of that can cause you to access and continue in the grace. Hallelujah. You got to continue in the faith. The, the other doctrines don't even they don't even promise that God will answer your prayers. And if you're going to continue toward what God has promised you, you need a God, hallelujah, that will answer your prayers. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Do you believe God can answer your prayers? Yeah. Hallelujah. You've got to have a belief in a God that answers your prayers so that you can continue. Continue, amen. Hallelujah. You continue in prayer. Don't stop talking to the one who's giving you instructions. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about continue. Don't turn the GPS off. Because God is giving you in prayer step by step instructions on how to get through to your breakthrough. Hallelujah. And in order to continue, you got to continue in prayer. It's an arrogance to think that you can live the Christian life without talking to God. Mm, come on. Amen? Amen. It's the arrogance of thinking you know as much as God knows, hallelujah, about what he wants to do in your life. Hallelujah. You don't know nothing. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> you don't know what God knows. No. No. You need to talk to God so God can talk to you. Yeah. I will stand up on my watch and I will watch and see what he will say unto me. Hallelujah. And how I will answer when I am reproved. That's a back in chapter 2. You don't even know what to say if you don't talk to God. Amen. Jesus said, I'm under command and what I should say and what I should speak. I speak not of myself, but of God. The Father, the words that he gives me, you don't know what you're doing if you ain't praying. Mm. And if you're going to continue to stay with it and not quit it, to never give in and give up, you need to talk to the one that gives you instructions. Most of this is in this book. Amen. Shameless plug. Continue. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You can find it on Amazon. <laughs> you got to know how to continue so that you don't quit right before you're at the edge of what God has promised you. Continue in prayer. We also talked about continuing in fellowship. Who are you hanging around? Who are you letting in your ear? Who do you let influence you? Who do you have around you that will encourage you to continue? So if you don't have the right people around you, you'll have people that will discourage you from doing what God called you to do. You can have well-meaning people giving you life advice on how you should stop trying so hard because it's stressing you out. Stop reaching for so much because you'll be disappointed. They don't see what you see. They don't know what you know. They haven't heard what you heard. You got to surround yourself with some people that will encourage you to continue because you can't stretch you can't reach your goals you can't accomplish your mission if you don't continue the Bible says the race isn't given to the swift it's not given to the strong hallelujah it's given to those that endure to the 
in. That's not all in one verse of scripture, amen. But it, it's all one thought. Mm -hmm. okay. Hallelujah. You got to continue to the end. Nobody's ever won a race that didn't continue to the end. Mm -hmm. amen? amen. Hallelujah. You got to continue. You can't reach your goal unless you continue. So continue, hallelujah, in his love. Remind yourself daily of how much God loves you. Continue, hallelujah, in the grace. Hallelujah. Keep stretching your faith. Hallelujah. To stretch, hallelujah, the grace of God. Hallelujah. Continue, hallelujah, in the word of God. Hallelujah. So that you continue to grow and learn what it is God has promised you. Continue in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, so that you can hear, hallelujah, the instructions that God gives to you. And continue in fellowship. Continue to hang around some people that encourage you. Because if they're not addition, they're subtraction. If they're not helping you to multiply, then they're causing division. Yes. Yes. You've got to surround yourself with people that encourage you to continue through the difficulty toward what God has promised you. Because God has put something great on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has shown you something on the horizon, hallelujah, that should push you and pull you to continue. See, what you got to do is surround yourself, one, with people that are for you. That's the inner circle. People that believe like you. You ever notice when Jesus went to do miracles, oftentimes when he would raise people from the dead and stuff like that, he had 12 disciples, but when he was going to do some of the big stuff, he only took Peter, James, and John. When he raised the one young lady from the dead, he kicked everybody out of the house. They didn't believe in what he was doing. You got to tighten your inner circle. Mm. Not saying that you can't have friends and associates that don't believe like you, but you can't let them have access to your inner you. Your, you can't let them be your ear. You can't let them be your confidants. You got to have people close to you that will encourage you to continue to do what God has called you to do so you can stretch. And you need to extend your outer circle. In other words, you need to have some people of different thinking, different ideas, different experience that you can bounce some ideas off of, causing you to see things sometimes from a different perspective. You got to continue in fellowship with people that build you up. I said it before, I'm going to say it again. If you are always the advisor, if you are always the comforter, if you are always the per person in your circle that is the smartest, you need to watch. extend it and watch your circle. Because what God has put in you is even bigger than you. What God has assigned to you is even more than you can do by yourself. Oh, yes. So let God send you some help. Thank you, Father. And widen your outer circle yes. so you can widen your knowledge base. You can not widen your experience. Hallelujah. To help you continue. Continue in what God has assigned to you. That's the only way to stretch. Stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Extend the cords.
strengthen the stakes, enlarge the place of thy tent. Because God's trying to do something big through you. He says, I'm going to cause the desolate cities to be inhabited. He's going to cause some things of resurrection to happen. Hallelujah, because of you. He said he's going to send you the heathen for an inheritance. Hallelujah. Some folks are going to get saved because of you. So what he needs you to do as you endeavor to stretch, he needs you to continue. Bring your vision board back to life with the Vision Workbook. Available now. Contact the Ornament of Grace Christian Center at 913-240-6262. What's up, y'all? It's Royal Gatson with Royal Thoughts Publishing Company. And I would like to introduce to you my first author, Pastor Jerry Gatson. Our success is not measured in an objective. Mm -hmm. Our success is measured in did we continue? Absolutely. Did we do the will? Are we finishing the work? Mm -hmm. Are we continuing what God told us to do? Absolutely. Whatever it is that you feel like God told you to do, stay with it, don't quit it, continue. Because mm -hmm. God will be glorified in the end. Absolutely.